Okay, welcome. With this video, we're going to be talking about break-even price and shutdown price. We're going to calculate the break-even price, shutdown price, and then do a little bit of interpretation through these questions. Uh, so this question is borrowed from Krugman Wells, Microeconomics, second edition, uh, and then on, from the chapter on perfect competition and the supply curve. Um, also, I should know, uh, let you know in the video description, I'll give a couple links to additional videos and resources, uh, and then I'll give you shortcuts. So if you kind of want to just skip ahead to a particular topic in this video, you can do so there. Okay, so this question starts off with, Consider Bob's DVD company described in problem four, the previous problem. So this is another video um, I just did, uh, and I'll link to that in the video as well. Um, assume that DVD production is a perfectly competitive industry. So with perfectly competitive industry, uh, there's a lot of simplifying and somewhat unrealistic assumptions. Um, so for example, uh, we assume that all DVDs are uh, identical commodities. They're, if one firm produces a DVD, it's identical to others. Uh, the other thing we assume that there's kind of free entry and exit, so there's really no cost besides the cost we'll discuss here um, to enter or exit the market. Um, and then also we assume that firms, you know, an individual firm has no power to influence price. Uh, so if this firm chooses to lower or uh, raise price, that really doesn't impact the market price. You know, there's just this kind of market price, all firms are price takers. Uh, however, in the long run, you know, firms can influence price. But uh, in the short run, we're assuming with perfectly competitive industry that no firm has a real influence over price. That is to say, all, pro all firms are price takers. They just, this market price out there that it gets to accept. Okay, so for each of the following question, explain your answers. First off, what is Bob's break-even price? Uh, and what is Bob's shutdown price? So for that, let's go to the cost. So uh, again, in a previous video, I went through the calculation of this and a kind of a very simple interpretation. So if you have any questions, go look at that. I'll post a link in the video description. So what are we looking at here? We have a quantity of DVDs in this column. So given these levels of production, you know, the firm has a choice over how much, how many DVDs it produces, zero, thousand, two thousand, so on. Um, here are variable costs. So variable costs are costs, you know, just for the, uh, so buying the, I guess, basic ingredients that go into producing a DVD. So maybe content costs plus the basic inputs, uh, as well as the labor. Uh, you know, if they want to produce 10,000 DVDs, there's quite a bit of uh, inputs and uh, workers, that sort of thing. So the var variable cost for 10,000 DVDs is 150,000, whereas the variable cost for uh, zero DVDs produces just zero. So variable cost varies with production. Um, and onto that, we're going to add on the fixed cost. With this question, as we discussed in that previous video, the, the fixed cost is $50,000 that goes toward uh, the machinery and the building. So when you add fixed cost plus variable cost, you get this total cost figure, and it's just a, an addition. Uh, we then have our marginal costs. So the marginal cost is the cost of increasing production uh, by a single unit. So you know when we produce, when we increase production from 9,000 to 10,000 DVDs, we expect a uh, marginal cost of $51 per DVD. So that's quite a bit. Whereas down here, uh, at this level, if we produce uh, if we if we increase production from 2,000 DVDs to 3,000 DVDs, uh, the aver the marginal cost for that increase in production is just simply simply a dollar uh, per additional DVD. Um, and then with this column, we have average variable cost of each DVD. Average variable cost is just variable cost divided by quantity, and it takes on this kind of familiar U-shaped curve. So early on, as production is being increased. Uh, the variable cost is decreasing, but after some point, variable cost starts to increase. This has to kind of do with the, uh, you know, the law of diminishing returns, um, where, you know, given the kind of fixed room that you're dealing with, you know, let's say we have a building with some machinery, uh, there's only so much additional um, production you could do with Um, that is the, the diminishing returns effect. So um, after some point, given you know, you're stuck in one building with one set of machinery, even if you throw more and more people at a problem uh, and more and more inputs at a problem, the average cost of each additional um, DVD produced is just going to increase. You can think of this as you know, too many cooks in a kitchen, that sort of thing. Um, if they wanted to get ramp up production really, really high, they'd have to hire a lot, a lot of people and 
spend a lot of money on those variable cost inputs. Um, and then the average total cost curve, the average total cost um, has a similar U-shaped curve where early on average total cost decreases quite a bit. Um, but after some point, the diminishing returns effect take over uh, and we'll see average total costs starting to increase. And so the break-even price is the price that has the minimum, the lowest average total cost. So the break-even price is 1880, sorry, it's 1383 right here uh, with 6,000 DVDs produced. So the break-even price is 1883, and let's stop and think about that. So uh, suppose that the market price for a DVD is uh, $14. Well, if the market price for a DVD is $14, this firm, you know, if it wanted to, it could just uh, produce at uh, you know 6,000 units, um, and it knows that the average total cost is going to be $13.83 at that level of production. So for each DVD that it produces, it's going to be making about, what is that, 17 cents on each DVD. So it knows that uh, if it produces that quantity at $14 per DVD, it's going to be making some economic profit, right? Uh, however, let's say that the average price was a bit lower. Um, let's say it was 13 so let's say that the market price was a bit lower. Let's say that the market price was $13. So at $13, there's no level of quantity. There's no quantity here where we could get average total costs down below uh, $13. So even at the most efficient or the lowest average total cost quantity at 6,000, if the market price is $13, then this firm is going to be losing 83 cents on every DVD. Um, and then at exactly $13.83, it'll be exactly breaking even. But keep in mind that the break even price is different than the shutdown price. So let's discuss the shutdown price. Um, the shutdown price is the price that's the minimum of the average variable cost. So in this case, the minimum average variable cost is $3. So the shutdown price is 3 bucks. So why is that the uh, shutdown price? Um, at $3, um, this firm, if it wanted to, um, wanted to maximize its profits or minimize its losses, um, let's say it produces 3,000 uh, DVDs. Um, at $3 or anything below $3, let's say $2, $2.50 or something like that, it's not even covering its variable costs. Um, at a price that low. So it can't even, it's not even bringing enough money to pay for uh, its inputs and to pay for its workers. So anything below $3, it doesn't even cover variable cost. And so we'll choose to shut down. It's, it's in its interest to shut down and go out, out of business when the market price is below $3. So as another example, let's say that the, the price of a DVD is two bucks. What should Bob do in the short one? Um, because $2 market price is below the shutdown price of $3, uh, this Bob should choose to shut down. You know, it's not bringing enough money to even cover the cost of uh, wages and inputs. Um, a little bit more tricky, let's think about what if the price of a DVD was $7? What is the profit maximizing quantity of DVDs that Bob should produce? And what is uh, his total profit and so forth? So at $7, uh, what's the profit maximizing quantity? Well, you find the profit maximizing quantity over here by setting marginal cost, this level, to the marginal revenue, which is price. So at um, this level of production, so at 5,000 units produced, um, the marginal cost is six. Uh, the marginal cost increases up to 13 when we jump up to 6,000 uh, units produced. So they're going to choose this level of production um, where uh, marginal cost is closest to marginal revenue. At any quantity greater than 5,000, the marginal cost, the additional cost of producing a DVD is going to be greater than the additional revenue, you know, that's $7. So, you know, if your question is, if you're assuming you're trying to maximize income, uh, and you're thinking about producing an additional unit, and you see that your additional costs are going to be greater than your additional revenue, 
well then quite obviously you don't want to do that because you'll be reducing your your profit so this firm is going to maximize profit by producing 5,000 DVD uh, which is the level here where marginal cost is close to marginal revenue of seven dollars uh, but also where the next marginal cost level that we have here with the 6,000 units produced uh, is more than our marginal revenue so this is determines where the quantity that we produce 5,000 okay so at 5,000 what's our profit you know what is our, our what is our loss uh, it's equal to at 5,000 units produced times seven dollars market price so we have a, a revenue of 35,000 so that's our revenue uh, what's our cost well, we have 5,000 produce times an average total cost here of 14 so the total cost is 70 So our loss here is 35,000. So production at this level, um, you know, it's gonna minimize loss by producing 5,000 units. Um, it's gonna bring in a total of $35,000 in revenue, but it's gonna have $70,000 in losses. So a net loss of $35,000. So you might be asking, hey, why aren't we shutting down at $7? You know, we chose the shutdown price, three bucks. Why aren't we shutting it out at seven? Well, uh, it has to do with our fixed costs. So we shut down when our marginal revenue, when our, uh, at, a, at an output level and price level where we're not covering variable costs anymore. Here, you know, at $7 per DVD, we still are definitely covering the uh, variable cost. However, we're also contributing some to our total cost. So if this, at the production at this level at 5,000 units, right, we have a $35,000 loss. If this firm were to choose to shut down, they still are responsible for those fixed costs. Remember, they paid for those fixed costs already. Uh, you know, they paid for the building, they paid for the machinery, that fixed cost is sunk already. So if you're given a choice between a loss of $50,000 or a loss of $35,000 where you produce, you're going to choose the smaller loss. You're minimizing your loss. Um, so this firm's going to continue to produce in the short run, um, and only at a price that's below that three dollar. Um, uh, only at a price that's below the three dollar um, shutdown price will this firm choose to actually shut down and uh, absorb the fifty thousand dollar fixed cost loss. However, in the long run should the market price continue to be seven dollars um, this firm is going to choose to shut down um, but that's in the long run in the short run you know in the short run the firms are stuck with their fixed cost and so this firm is going to choose to continue to produce because it brings down their overall cost um, but in the long run it gets to make a choice about whether or not to spend money on fixed costs so in the long run this firm would choose to exit up next Suppose that instead uh, the price of the DVD is now $20. Now what is the profit maximizing quantity of DVDs that Bob should produce? Uh, what's the total profit? Um, will he produce? Will he shut down in the short run? Or will he stay in the industry? Um, and then in the long run, will he stay in the industry or will he exit? So first off, given a market price of $20, our first step is to think about what is the profit maximizing quantity of production? So Given a marginal revenue or a price uh, of 20 bucks, what uh, is the marginal cost that's closest to this? So um, producing 7,000 units here, the marginal um, cost is 16, but the marginal revenue is 20. So this firm is going to choose to produce because the additional revenue is 20 bucks, but the additional cost is 16. So clearly the revenue of an additional unit is greater than the cost of additional unit. Jumping up to 8,000, the again, you know, it's a price taker, so the additional revenue is 20 bucks for each unit of production, but the additional cost, the marginal cost, is 23 bucks. 
So the cost of additional unit production is more than the, the, cost, the, the additional revenue they're getting. So it's not going to go up to this 8,000 quantity because marginal costs are greater than marginal revenue. However, it will produce up to this $7,000 unit to maximize profits. So at 7,000 units, uh, what's the total profit? So total profit is revenue minus uh, costs. I misspelled revenue, sorry. So revenue here is the 7,000 times the um, how much you know each quantity cost so times 20 so revenue total revenue is for 140,000 uh, and then what's total cost so total cost at 7,000 units production is 99,000 so that means the total profit is going to be 41,000 so in the short run Obviously, this firm is making money, so it's going to choose to continue to produce. Um, it's covering its variable costs, it's covering its total cost, it's making a profit. Uh, and then in the long run, will this firm choose to stay in the industry or not? And the answer is yes, um, because the firm is making a profit. So good for it. Good job. Um, that's it. Hopefully this was helpful. Be sure to check out the video description if you're interested in more videos that kind of answer intro, basic intro to microeconomic questions. And let me know if you have any questions. And uh, thanks and have a good day. Bye.